One other consideration when it comes to structure models is entity relationship diagrams. And the reason we're going to discuss these is that you're likely to run across a lot of clients that still use entity relationship diagrams or have a lot in their documentation of their business processes and systems. Now when it comes down to looking at an ERD, uh, which you'll often hear them called, an ER diagram or an ERD, fundamentally They're the same as UML class models. They serve the exact same purpose. They look very similar. The key difference is that ER diagrams have been around for quite some time and have branched and forked into a number of different practices regarding notation. Whereas UML, the UML class models are still pretty standardized in how you denote your various associations, your various classes, attributes, etc. Just like a UML class diagram, an ER diagram is a graphical view of the database contents and relationships so the entity relationship diagrams calls the associations between the various entities relationships just like they're called in databases so there's a little bit more commonality between the er diagram and the database itself whereas the class model calls them classes and associations but cardinality is also a consideration in these diagrams much like the multiplicity is in the class diagram. Boxes represent entities. So that is similar to the boxes that represent classes in class diagrams. Lines connect entities. and indicate relationships, much like lines connect classes and indicate associations in class models. Now on these lines in an ER diagram sometimes you'll see diamonds and I'm going to call these optional that indicate the nature of the relationship. So you may recall that in UML models uh, for when we were first starting to identify an association between two classes, we would write on the line the nature of that association. Well, the same thing on an ER diagram, but you just put that word inside a diamond. All right, so let's take a look at an entity relationship diagram. And we use the REA model in entity relationship diagrams, just like we do in class models. So let's say we've got some goods. We've got monetary assets or bank accounts. We've got a sale. We've got cash receipt. We've got salespeople. We've got customers. 
So just like we had before, we've got resources, we've got events, we've got agents. A customer is associated with a sale, a salesperson is associated with a sale, and we're selling goods. Customer can make a cash receipt that is also associated with the salesperson and they receive money. So you can see at this point it looks much, very much like a class model. Now depending on which notation you're using you might see the exact same one to many or zero to many or you might see something along the lines of this where the little branch at the end indicates that we do have a possibility for a many relationship and on the good side you have to have some good associated with a sale so it's one or many and on the goods to sale side well we may have goods that never sell so there could be a zero and then but we could also have goods that are sold many times so we have that and then as a descriptor we might have a diamond in the relationship goods included in the sale. So the diagram itself serves pretty much the same purpose and is uh, fairly consistent looking with the class model, the UML class model. So if you run across them in your clients you shouldn't have trouble adjusting to them. Just be aware that the notations in the ER diagrams, uh, there are many different varieties, and, and again, they've been around and people have different practices, so you may run into different varieties of these, even sometimes within the same organization.